Salam Tana, and now you spend it. Greetings. In a Rasia di Nostra Farine, Malcolm Vedetta Lidge Tefari Adarasachu. May you have a beautifully, and hopefully, you've had a beautifully good 119th HIM, His Imperial Majesty, Kamal Hadassalasi Earth Day. This is the 119th, actually the end of that, and we're going into the Ihud. Ihud is the first day. Now, from a previous recording that we didn't get to post up, that we have reflected right here, let's get out the way for a moment, and that reflected right here is the Mezmore um, Dawit, the Mezmore, the Mezmore Dawit, Psalm 144. Psalm 144, and we're going to teach on this particular um, psalm because this psalm is known as the psalm for the ending, <coughs> the ending or the termination, the fulfillment of the Sabbath or of the Sendet, and we also touch on the Targum or the Tergum, so forth and so on. Now, the reason why this is particularly um, important to us at this particular point in time is because this um, 119th Earth Day or Earth Strong of His Imperial Majesty or of the Son of Man, of Lij Tefari, Lij Tefari Mekonin, otherwise known as Lij Tefari Mekonin, has occurred, has coincided with the Sabbath day, the Shabbat day, or the Sendbet day. And this means in our Hebraic order of, of calculation of time that this means it's a very special, this is a, this is a very special um, Sabbath day or, or Sendbet day because of the correspondence, because it's correspondence with the Sabbath day. And there's a psalm, <coughs> there's certain psalms that are to be recited on the Sabbath day, and this particular psalm right here, Psalm 144, is a psalm that is appropriate for the conclusion, the ending or the termination of the remembrance of the Sabbath day. And it's called, it's called uh, Joy in God's Protection, Joy in Jah's Protection. And we just want to share a little bit of this and move on to another particular teaching um, as well. But we didn't want to pass by and not say a few words about the appropriate psalm that is to be um, read or more appropriately chanted for the termination of the Senbet Day and to give the brothers and the sisters a little bit more of a background and a little bit more insight into the appropriateness of this particular psalm. Now, this psalm here is a joyous psalm, Psalm 144, and it's largely of a, a mosaic of citations. It's considered to be a mosaic of citations from other psalms. In other words, it has various, various quotes and, and passages from other particular psalms. Um, to the title of David, um, the LX exit adds against Goliath or against Goliath. And the Targum, the Targum, as we put up here, um, the Targum, right, which means the Targum, in, according to the Ashkenazi um, pronunciation, the white Jewish pronunciation says Targum. According to the Ethiopic, we say, we say, uh, or ter But most Ethiopians today will say Targum, but actually this is a Gwe, Targum, 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 right? Um, <coughs> This, uh, the Targum, or the Targum, it sees in, in verse uh, 10 a reference to this Philistine, the Philistine, the Philistine, a Mawian hurtful sword, the, or the sword of Goliath. So in the King of Kings, in the, in the Metaf Kedus, in the Bible of His Imperial Majesty, it's known as Sile Goliath, 
or concerning Goliath. And this is also revised, the revised um, first edition of the Mizmur Dawi that we hope to have published within about a week or so, and we'll bring more word on that when we have that particular book um, available. Um, which we'll be going into some of some of this will be also um, referred to in that particular volume. But this particular psalm here is considered to be of a composite character of the psalm, and there are Aramaisms or the Aramaic Aramaic expressions. There's a mention of David or Dawit as a person other than the writer. So all of this is suggestive <coughs> that the superscription within the King James and even the Jewish Bibles is to be understood in the Davidic style or the Davidic school, according to the Davidic school of the psalmist or of psalm writers. But in the Amharic, it's very interesting because in the Amharic it says, Sile concerning Goliath and it doesn't really agree with the King James or with the, the Masoretic, but we have to recognize that Septuagint and the Ethiopic um, scrolls are older and more accurate than the so-called Masoretic or the Texas Receptus, and therefore also older and more reliable than the King James Version in many um, details, and much of the attention to details. But now, in the Hebraic uh, liturgy, or the so-called Jewish liturgy, it, pref it, it prefaces or prefaces the service for the termination of the Shabbat. So this psalm is used as a, as a mechdim, or a preface, for the particular service that certain Orthodox Jews conduct for the termination or the ending of the Sabbath day. Now, the praise of God as the one who trained my hands for war and my fingers for battle that's found in the Psalms, the phrase, who traineth my hands for war, my fingers for battle, or battle, it fits well with the imminent renewal of weekday struggle. And this is why we thought this particular Psalm was very um, appropriate as, as a, a termination of the Sabbath psalm, as well as to remind the brothers and sisters also of the importance of Psalm 144. The converted Jews have understood this. The, the, the Khazars, Ashkenazis, and other Jews have understood this, and therefore we as ethnic Hebrews, as we are once again grafted in to our to our own vine tree, as we are, as there's been others who are not part of the true Hebraic vine who have been grafted in, and we, from our ancestors, have been broken off, and now we're being regrafted in to our own vine tree. In other words, to where we belong, it's important for us to start to recognize important elements of what we have lost. But this particular psalm here, it fits well with the imminent renewal of the weekday struggle because the weekday, the six days of the week is a struggle for us. And it's a struggle because there's a warfare. There's a warfare with the world. And this psalm, it prepares us for that battle, that battle to, to profit and to overcome for the King of Kings and his Christ in order that our Sabbath and sabbatical time can be truly one of, of rest and uh, reflection and joy in Torah, in the Orit, in the Word of God, and in one another who are in the King of Kings and in His Christ. So it, it, it builds up the individual as well as the community. Now, after the Sabbath calm, after the calm of the Sabbath, comes the intrusion of the world. And many of you all may have noticed this too. After seeking to remember the Sabbath and keep it set apart and to study and to relax and reflect, that after that sendbed and sabbatical time of the Shabbat, that the world and worldliness seeks to intrude. And for obvious reasons, it does intrude on what was that calm that hopefully we 
get to the the maturity, you know, we get to the point that we can really experience the Sabbath as it's intended to be experienced. But remember the old maxim. The old maxim is that practice makes perfect. So as we practice, we will perfect. So when the Master said, be ye perfect, therefore it's a matter of study and it's a matter of practice. But moving forward, after the Sabbath comes the intrusion of the world, against which this particular psalm, which is Psalm 144 that we have highlighted right here, Psalm 144, it proceeds to invoke Jah's protecting hand, to seek to invoke Jah's the right hand, or Yah. Yah, it seeks to, which, which we touched on before, that right hand and, and the whole, the whole um, symbology of even the Hebraic, um, Yod and the uh, Ethiopic Yemen is the right hand. So this psalm, it invokes Yah's protecting hand. While the joys of a full garner and an overflowing sheepfold are those to be attained by the labor, which is once more man's lot. So it is our lot to work because the Bible says that he who does not work does not eat. So these are important things for us to learn, especially here in the wilderness of North America, the Americas, and the Caribbean. These are important things for us to learn. So when we do come together as a community, the community itself can be self-sustaining. The community can be prosperous. And the community can be assigned to others in the world of the true grace and the blessing of the King of Kings and his Christ. So it's important for us to learn the example and to practice and perfect the example so that we can be examples and exemplars for others. And this is the true vision of Yahweh and the Mashiach, of Yahweh and his Messiah. But as the psalmist continues, whatever comes to man in his warfare is of God's doing. In other words, our six days of the week is warfare with the world. It's warfare with the world for the sake of Yahweh and his Messiah and for the sake of our brothers and sisters within the family of God and Christ. So as we work, we are to profit, we are to prosper, and we are to go after the prophet and the prosper walking that righteous way and, and not to feel as though it is something wrong to think about working and overcoming and to prosper and, 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 and to profit by it as something wrong. It is not. But the reason why many who do work, and there are a lot of hard workers, y'all might be hard workers, but there's a saying that there's no rest to the wicked, and it is wicked to avoid to remember the sin that and to keep it set apart and to keep that day as a rest day. So this is the example of the Sabbath both for us as well as for others. But it's important that we study and show ourselves approved and that we rightly divide and rightly explain the word of truth. And this Psalm 144 is a ideal psalm for the ending of the sabbatical time and the beginning of the weekday of the weekday struggle but we must remember that whatever comes to us in our warfare because it's warfare in the words some look at work as work but we look at work whatever work whatever our occupational work as Hebrews to be warfare especially vis-a-vis -vis the sabbatical time so the Sabbath is that calm is that rest is that relaxation is is that recharging and this psalm now is like a door. It, it, it helps to, to initiate the next stage of the cycle, which begins from Ehud, which is called Sunday. And Sunday, Ehud, is the first day. And it's on the first day that in community we would gather together after the remembrance and the keeping of the Senbet, the Shabbat, holy and, and, and set apart. So when we speak about Sunday and Saturday and which day is it, when we start to study the Word and show ourselves approved and recognize what's really written there, it explains itself. 
it's almost self-explanatory. As we keep the Sabbath day set apart, then that Sunday or the first day we gather with our brothers and sisters. But there's no obligation on the Shabbat day or the Senbet day to go to tabernacle or to even synagogue. Many other Jews have done this. And especially if, it, if we're in a community, then of course, there is the opportunity, but the Sunday is the ideal day, the first day when we do gather after the termination of the Senbet. And this particular psalm here, Psalm 144, it is what initiates it. So prosperity, we must remember, which is, which is the goal for I and I. I and I ought to prosper. How can we be a blessing to anyone else if we cannot even afford to 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 eat ourselves, you understand? Eat, eat, do you know what I'm saying? Now, true, we are in this transitional period of time where we're, we're, we're almost betwixt and between. We're in this, trans, this time of change between the so-called old world and the new world, coming out of the old life and moving into the new life. So there is much instability in any time of change, much uncertainty yet having an order to our way of life, both individually and collectively in community. It is Yah's ordained way, and in that we can prosper and we can overcome. But prosperity, brothers and sisters, remember, is only real when this is recognized. It's only real when we recognize that whatever comes to us in our warfare is Yah's doing, and it is from Him that man, that we as, as man, as born again sons and daughters, win the power to triumph is only from Jah. So the sabbatical time and remembering the Sabbath, the mental ascent, remembering the Sabbath and keeping it set apart is important in this process because only from Yah or Yahweh or Jah, if you please, that Man wins power to triumph and the fruits of victory. So when we speak about our poverty in this society, and, and yes, there is a lot of financial and economic stress and distress, no doubt. But when we recognize how did we and our ancestors get into this, this, this curse, you understand, and how we, our ancestors and us, uh, cause this, 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 this curse, as per Deuteronomy chapter 28. Then comes the decision. Do you still want to live in that curse, or do you want to recognize your true identity, recognize truly who we are as Hebrews, and then to learn in order to do that which brings us out of the, the, the curses for disobedience and into the blessings for obedience. Thus, the Sabbath, the Sabbath is the test. The Sabbath is really the key because ones who will refuse to even remember the Senbet, much less to keep it set apart, are totally unworthy of the blessings. So individually, this is an individual um, choice and decision that we have to make. So there's much more, and we'd like to go through this particular psalm at another time in more detail. But Psalm 144, Psalm 144 as we've uh, put up here, Psalm 144 is the, is the proper psalm for the ending or the termination of the Sabbath day, as well as for renewing, renewing, let me write this right here, the renewal, the renewal of the weekday, of the weekday warfare, the warfare and the struggle. You understand? What is the struggle? The struggle is to do His will. The struggle is to prosper. The struggle is to overcome. The struggle is to truly be that blessing. You understand? To, to others. You understand? To receive the blessing in order to be a blessing to others. So it's all about obedience. Obey and love. So Take this down. Hopefully we'll get option to get into to more. We actually was um, hoping to have been able to bring this to you um, from, from like last 
from last uh, a week, but due to some technical difficulties, we were unable to. So give thanks and praise. And once again, Melkam Ledet Lich Tefari Adar